Mercedes have recently been a masterpiece in producing cars with comfort, convenience and class leading luxury. The E-Class has been a pinnacle car for this improvement and with over 50 million units shifted since the early 1950s, the E-Class is one of the best selling models in the history of Mercedes-Benz. So thanks to some close friends I've managed to get a chance to experience this car, here's my review and thoughts. So first impressions, the E-Class is a very quiet and refined car. They've managed to make the front end slightly smaller compared to the previous generation, which has resulted in a drag coefficient of 0.23. And that means less air going over the cabin and less wind noise. But the important question is, does it still make that diesel rattle noise like you get in the VW products? Well, have a listen. There's not that much, so. Mercedes have spent a lot of time soundproofing this car, probably explains why it's so bloody heavy. The E-Class also uses some very sophisticated suspension. Mercedes call it agility control. What it does is automatically adjust individual shock absorbers based on your driving style and the road conditions. So basically, if you're bombing it around the corner, what it will do, it will adjust the dampers on the opposite side, make them stiffer to reduce body lean, and hence you'll have more grip in the tires and it'll get you around that corner. Yeah, it's a really nice, go. Yeah, it goes around that roundabout. Well, such a wafter. There's valving inside the shock absorbers. So if one of them does go, you're going to be left with one hefty bill. So that's something to look out for if you are a second hand car buyer, as these cars do rack up a load of miles, except this one's only done 30,000 miles. So it's pretty fresh. In terms of economy, Mercedes says this car does 72 miles per gallon from its 66 litre fuel tank. But I'm currently averaging 51 miles per gallon and that's made up of the owner's daily use. So it's a pretty reliable figure, unlike the manufacturer's statistics, that's never always accurate. We've got the nine speed automatic gearbox in this car and it's butter smooth. The gear changes are seamless and it doesn't have trouble jumping gears whilst downshifting, so you're able to get that quick and uh, fast acceleration. There's a bit of turbo, is that turbo lag? Wait, there's a bit of turbo lag in there. It's so weird driving diesel cars though, as the torque is just, it's just right there, but it's pointless revving it out up until 5,000 RPM. The extended gear ratio as well means you can go very fast without the need of uh, high engine speed, high revs, so it doesn't compromise on efficiency, hence why it's actually doing 50 to the gallon, which is great. But the problem with these, you know, these German brands in general, especially in this year, is majority of their cars just look the same. From afar, a C-Class doesn't look that different from the CLA, the S-Class. Um, it's just a case of pick your size. I'm a bit disappointed with the panels that you get in this car as they are plastic. You are paying, don't forget, these cars are around 35 to 40 grand new. Oh, you'd expect something better from that. We haven't spoke about the drive modes in this car. You've got the classic uh, Eco Comfort Sport, Sport Plus. Let's just put it into Sport Plus and see. Well, I could already feel a change. The gearbox is a little bit more feisty, the steering feels a little bit more heavy and the dampers have got that tiny bit stiffer but this is oh my god the ultimate oh i won't say ultimate but it's a motorway cruiser the only thing that's just a bit bad about it is massive to navigate it's a really really lengthy car the wipers are really they love to make a noise the thing you'd be probably shocked about is this is actually quite a reliable car it doesn't have many issues and in fact you could probably get away with not having any warranty because mercedes do love to charge you a lot with the warranty fees and maintenance as well even though you're probably not going to have any issues with it a service is going to cost you nearly 500 quid the mirrors i am shocked as to how good these mirrors are they aren't even that big uh, but it feels like visibility out of them feels like they're massive mirrors in fact really do love the mirrors on the Mercedes E-Class the steering as well half perforated uh, the Mercedes logo in the middle 
and uh, all, all the touch sensitive pads and buttons. Not overly crowded, which is what we like. Mercedes do nail steering wheels, except I do prefer the ones in the Audis, just a tiny bit better. Right guys, what I'm gonna do is pull over and I'm gonna switch over to POV now. I know you guys do like the point of view videos, well, the section, so I will include more of that. So give me one second and we'll switch over. So point of view, what do you guys think? Do you like the interior of the 2017 Mercedes E-Class? Now visibility is not the best in this car. It's a really lengthy car. The C pillars, uh, <laughs> can't see anything out of them. The rear, nothing out there. Um, good job this car has really good reversing cameras. But I've got to say it's a really spacious car inside, especially for the rear seat passengers. You do get 540 litres of boot space, so that's same as the Jai XF, uh, but it's 10 litres bigger than the Audi A6 and um, BMW 5 Series. The suspension is really smooth. It's probably the smoothest in its class. Um, it's probably on the league of the BMW 7 Series and the S-Class to be honest. In terms of your competitors, you've got BMW 5 Series, uh, Audi A6, the Alfa Giulia, Kia Stinger GT. But, yeah, they all don't really offer a great ordeal of diesel engines, especially Alfa. Just avoid Alfa if you want a diesel. But if we just try change the gear with the paddles, as you can see, instant, up, fifth. Yeah, that's cool. But if this is a car that you want to travel 50 miles to work and back for, then this would probably be the perfect choice. If it's going to be dallying around up and downtown, then choose something else. There's also a signature on the windscreen, probably something that you guys don't know of but it's Dalma's signature. Right, I think it's time we pull over and talk about the finer details. An executive saloon like this isn't always considered exciting for your average consumer. The E-Class has always been a company car, a car to take you to work and back, and if you live in Germany, it's even used as a taxi thanks to its massive length of 5 meters and width of 2 meters. It's also quite a heavy object, weighing at just over 1.7 tons. On the outside, you've got yourself a set of high-performance LED lights, electrically folding mirrors, and a set of 17-inch 5-spoke silver alloy wheels, which I will admit are not to my taste. So as for the model variant that I've got in front of me, it's the 2017 E220D SE with the 2 litre diesel engine currently pushing 189 brake horsepower and 295 pounds foot of torque. It takes roughly 7.3 seconds to get up to 60 miles per hour, which is a whole second quicker than the older E-Class with the 2.1 litre diesel engine. Owner course, it tops out at a whopping 149 miles per hour. For price in 2021, well, it's very mileage dependent because it's very hard to find these with low miles. So expect something between 15 and 20 grand. For car tax, you'd be surprised, but as it only emits 102 grams per kilometer of CO2, the government has been nice and you'll only pay 20 pound a year. That's cheaper than a Vauxhall Adam. Jumping over to the rear seats and as expected, there is bus lengths of room in here. No strange things to report other than this weirdly designed elastic seat back pocket and you get a little 12 volt socket in this hidden compartment. And also you won't believe this, but it's actually an optional extra to have fold down rear seats in this car. Next up, we move over to the front half of the interior. And from an initial perspective, it kind of reminds me of a mix of the Mercedes C-Class and Mercedes S-Class. It borrows the wide center console with the piano black finish here and the command control right down here from the Mercedes C-Class. Moving slightly up, you've got the four circular vents 
Uh, the infotainment system and the analog dial, somewhat reminiscent of the Mercedes S-Class. As for the infotainment system, well, I spoke to the owner and he's not a fan and I do agree with him. Systems in the Audi and BMW are just a tad bit better. This one's actually quite laggy and you don't get the bigger 12.3 inch display in this car. You only get an eight inch screen. The 12 inch screen is a optional extra, unfortunately. Nonetheless, there are some cool features in the infotainment system. For example, you get ambient lighting and Mercedes gives you 64 options to choose from, which means you have two different variants for each color. I do feel like I do argue with myself half the time as to which color to choose from, but it does leave a nice ambience around the cabin. On the multifunction steering wheel, you get two touch sensitive pads on opposite sides and both do separate things. For example, the touch sensitive pad on the left side controls what's on your infotainment system and the touch sensitive pad on the right side controls what's on your small digital screen ahead of you. Next up, I've noticed when the engine start stop button lights up, it's got this super futuristic turbine design to it. In addition, I love these interior lights when they light up. It looks like something out of a Hollywood movie star's dressing room, it's very plush. On the Mercedes seat controls on the driver's side, there's a button that has the letter L on it with a seat. If you press that, usually it should allow you to control the seat on the left. Um, however, this car has manually adjustable seats. So I have no idea what that button does. I'm not too sure if it's just there for the purpose of just being there. Um, can someone explain it in the comment section down below? I'm a little stuck. So that's the Neft Horn review around the 2017 Mercedes E-Class. The direct competitor to this car is of course the BMW 5 Series. And although that car is probably more fun to drive, somewhat more practical, and cheaper to run it kind of reminds me of an unmarked police car and that scares me a little so my choice of the pick is of course this car or maybe a alpha julia or kia stinger gt but look i'll stop rambling on thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next review